Dinosaurs are probably used more than anything to convince people of millions of years. I mean, even little kids all know about dinosaurs. Just, just say the word dinosaurs and see what they say next. They probably would say evolution. <laughs> but when you have this, this universal theme right across the globe, many different continents, many different cultures, and you know, a vast span of human history, then there's probably going to have to be some universal core truth there. When we look at the dinosaur fossil record, we see that they were buried furiously, rapidly, and simultaneously, oftentimes found fleeing in groups, even leaving their youth behind. Take this massive bone bed in Hilda, Canada. Thousands of centrosaurs were catastrophically buried over an entire square mile. Or this one in China, where thousands of different kinds of dinosaurs were simultaneously buried in a single 980-foot-long ravine. There are hundreds of dinosaur bone beds all over the world, including the U.S. where the Morrison Formation covers 13 states and 700,000 square miles. Thousands of torn apart dinosaurs are buried here in hundreds of mass graves, with many found in the classic death pose with their necks arched back, choking as they died. Museum signs everywhere even admit they died in a watery catastrophe. Paleontologists have long noted that many animal fossils are found with their heads thrown back into what is called the dead bird position. Some scientists thought the creatures had fallen into the water when they died, and the current pushed their head back. Others suggested that rigor mortis was the cause, or perhaps drying tendons in the back of the neck pulled the head back. Research ruled out all three explanations. Scientists finally decided it was the result of suffocation caused most likely by drowning. There are some three-dimensional dinosaurs that are preserved where a dinosaur is crouching down and yet he's covered in mud and the only way to do that is if the mud is accumulating so quickly that he's literally suffocated in the mud because if he had died he would have fallen over or at least would have laid down flat. Dr. Carl Warner spent 17 years traveling to museums and dig sites around the globe, photographing thousands of original fossils and the actual fossil layers where they were found. His research revealed a lack of evidence for evolution theory, including no transitional fossils and clear evidence that shows animals have remained the same over the supposed millions of years of evolution. And it's worse than that. Not only did we find this for animals, then for the plants, we found examples from every major plant division of plants living today buried alongside the dinosaurs fossilized and they look the same as a modern plant. Amber is what I call a time capsule. It uh, is some, some amber is supposed to be up to 50 million years old and uh, quite a bit of amber has what are called inclusions in it. Uh, well, the reason I call amber a time capsule is lo and behold when we find for example um, ants and termites uh, we've even found uh, the pine bark beetle that is decimating the forests in the Rocky Mountain West. These animals, or these insects, if you will, are exactly the same as what we have today. Even Charles Darwin said, as by evolution theory, innumerable transitional forms must have existed. Why do we not find them embedded in countless numbers in the crust of the Earth? Darwin expected that these challenges would be resolved after more research was conducted. But today, 150 years and millions of fossils later, the proof still doesn't exist. The Bible says the floodwaters increased upon the earth for 150 days until all the high hills under heaven were covered with over 20 feet of water. This process successively buried all creatures outside the ark based on where they lived as the floodwaters prevailed, how smart they were, their means and speed of mobility, and their body density. This is precisely why the fossil record generally shows the shallow water marine creatures buried in the lower layers. Then, as the ocean waters rose higher and higher, the suffocated fish were buried, followed by amphibians, reptiles, mammals, and then birds. Fish, when they die, if, when they finally do hit the bottom, they're eaten by everything. And usually, um, they're eaten on the way down. And so their, their bones tend to be scattered all over the place, and, and their flesh is, is destroyed. And even if they land in the mud, the bones dissolve over time in the water They're made of calcium carbonate is soluble in seawater. Uh, it, it, it really it takes special circumstances to make a fossil. There are some fish fossils that I've seen 
with exquisite preservation. All the scales, all the fins are intact. The, the fish's mouth is closed. His gills are closed, which is an indication that he's buried in squish. In fact, the, the streamlines around the fish in the mud, it looks like he was struggling and trying to swim as he's being buried. An ichthyosaur was fossilized giving birth. And millions of clams have been found buried and fossilized in a closed position. Now, when a clam dies, its muscles relax and it opens up. So these clams were alive when they were catastrophically buried. Most people are under the impression that coal forms slowly in swamps over millions of years. But this view neglects the testimony of tree trunk fossils that cut across many coal layers, known as polystrate fossils. If these tree trunks were buried gradually over thousands of years, the top parts of the trees would have rotted away before they could be protected by sediment. We cannot escape the conclusion that sedimentation was at times very rapid indeed. So the slow swamp story should itself be laid to rest. If you, a dinosaur died uh, in the, the forest, it's going to uh, rot away and get scavenged. And you can see that in the farms today. You don't see uh, sheep and cattle fossilizing. Near the bottom of the fossil record is a layer of rock known as the Cambrian. This layer is bursting with fossils of all kinds of creatures, many of which look very bizarre to us today. Now, at the time of Charles Darwin, 150 years ago, no fossils were known to exist below the Cambrian layer. The Cambrian fossils seemed to explode from nowhere. Darwin recognized that this Cambrian explosion was a huge challenge to his position. Well, after over a century and a half of research, the Cambrian explosion is an even bigger mystery to evolutionary researchers. You see, more and more fossils have been found throughout the Cambrian. We now know that every major group of organisms, including vertebrates, existed at this time the layers were deposited. That means that every major body plan existed before the Cambrian. What can explain the Cambrian fossils? God created all creatures fully formed and functioning, so we wouldn't expect to find ancestors to the Cambrian creatures in the rocks below. As the floodwaters rose, they would have ripped up miles of sediment, redepositing it in layers, trapping and burying billions of creatures. The seemingly bizarre creatures of the Cambrian were perfectly designed for their marine environment, an environment that was destroyed by the flood. And when we look at the fossil record, we can see that the complexity is all there from the beginning. And this, this begs the question of where did all this complexity come from? We have analyzed the soft tissues in this specimen and uh, using state-of-the-art techniques and found uh, a whole bunch of things, including you know, still soft uh, remains of the skin and cells, cellular organelles, and even uh, traces of the original uh, biomolecular makeup. We can observe in a lab that soft tissue breaks down quite quickly. It simply can't last millions of years, even under ideal conditions, let alone the inconsistent conditions found in nature. While at a dig at Hell Creek Formation in Montana, scientist Mark Armitage came upon the largest Triceratops horn ever unearthed at the site. When he examined the horn under a high-powered microscope, he was shocked to see soft tissue. This discovery stunned other scientists because it indicated that dinosaurs roamed the Earth only thousands of years ago rather than 60 million years ago. Armitage joins a growing number of scientists and educators who have lost their jobs for challenging the sacred cow of evolution. The very idea of blood cells in a 70 million year old bone was more than unconventional. It was radical. We got another piece of bone, we put it in the solution, we waited two or three or four weeks, looked again, more blood vessels. We must have repeated that with probably 17 or 18 different fragments of bone. Just in the last 20 years, over 50 articles have been published in scientific journals that have documented 14 bioorganic materials in dinosaur bones that simply cannot be millions of years old. These include blood vessels, red blood cells, hemoglobin, bone cells, ovalbumin, chitin, unmineralized bone, collagen, limited DNA, skin pigments, FEX proteins, histones, keratin, and elastin.
You know, radiometric dating is seen as the linchpin of, of the evolutionary age of the Earth. They say, oh, all these radiometric dating techniques show the Earth is ancient, so how can you believe in a young Earth? Well, actually, what I do is I, I appeal to known lava flows. Go to Hawaii, sample a lava flow, sample some basalt that's come out of the Earth, bring it back to your laboratory, tell me what age you measure. It's not going to be zero. It's not going to be even a few thousand years old. You're going to get an old age. Uh, it doesn't matter what technique you use. So what that does is that takes the idea that you can measure the difference between the daughter product and the parent product and calculate an age as if there was a clock. That discredits anything that, that's using the assumption that there's zero daughter product. We have done carbon-14 dating on coal and diamonds, which are hugely old. Diamonds are supposed to be over a billion years old, and yet we find carbon-14 in them. Now, hang on, carbon-14 would have long just decayed. The main movers and shakers at the time were really striving to discredit the Bible. I mean, Lyell himself said that his stated goal was to free the world from Moses. And if that's a stated goal to free the world from Moses, he is actively trying to undermine the biblical account, biblical account of creation. Charles Darwin did the same thing when he thought up his idea of evolution. He saw that the facts of the fossil record did not line up with his theory, and so he made a very unscientific decision. He decided to hold on to his theory and ignore the facts. I had actually, uh, I guess, really felt that I was reading something special because I could tell God how he did it. I had put God in the box and I'd say, yeah, God, you started out, but this is exactly how you did it. You used evolution. Now, I just, when that was pointed out to me, it hit me right between the eyes. Boy, how arrogant. One thing to have faith, I have faith that God was the creator, but that's substantiated by what I see around me. Mm -hmm. To say I have faith that evolution produced this when I can't even see how it could happen.